Hello, everyone. Hopefully, uh, you're enjoying KubeCon. Today is the last day of KubeCon, technically day three. Uh, there's been over 12,000 of you participating in a variety of fun cloud native activities uh, this week. Uh, I don't know about uh, you, but uh, it's been a pretty crazy, fun, but also tiring week. I was a little bit worried doing the keynote today because my voice was pretty much shot last night. So, uh, but luckily, I have enough uh, voice left to, to kind of uh, close this out today. So um, it's been just amazing to kind of see everyone. Um, I hope some of the changes we made uh, this year were exciting for you all. I personally, my favorite part was the project pavilion that we had set up in the middle of the stage and you know, meeting all the maintainers and projects. It's just been great. So I hope that's been good out. It's been going well for everyone. We're going to keep that. We're going to keep that uh, set up for for future KubeCon. So, you know, before we uh, kind of uh, you know get, go on with today, this this is the this is the twentieth uh, KubeCon Cloud Native Con that we've put together. So it's uh, we've done a few of these, and I think it's always kind of fun uh, as we kind of reminisce. This is the you know tenth year anniversary of Kubernetes. So it's like, let's, let's let's do a little, little trip down memory lane if 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 we can. So let's do a little history here. Um, you know, a lot of you that have been involved with the project for a while know that uh, it's been 10 years, but in June 7th, 2014, Google open-sourced Kubernetes. It's great. It's a good thing to do, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> in, uh, in, at, at OSCON in July in 2015, um, there was, uh, you know, OSCON's a small little, nice little open-source conference out in Portland. Uh, you know, Google and Linux Foundation uh, got on stage and basically announced hey, Kubernetes hits 1.0, we're going to contribute this code base uh, to a foundation and truly build a fully open, uh, you know, multi-vendor, uh, open source neutral, uh, you know, community. Uh, this was also uh, the time that, uh, you know, I ended up joining the organization to kind of help uh, build and uh, start uh, CNCF as employee zero, uh, essentially. Um, later, the community continued to grow. Uh, we held our first KubeCon in San Francisco, November 9th, 2015. Uh, special thank you to uh, Joseph Jacks to start that whole uh, event. And uh, it, was, uh, it, it was pretty small. It was, uh, you know, <laughs> a few hundred people at, at, at most. Very, 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 very kind of small event. So we're still, we're still in the 2015, um, you know, era here. We finally got our stuff together and, uh, you know, officially, you know, uh, formed the CNCF, got the legal entity set up. We hosted our first board meetings. This was in December 2015. Uh, for those of you who want a little bit of trivia, it was actually hosted uh, in the New York Times uh, office. Uh, and it was only about, I would say, uh, two handfuls of companies, maybe about 15 to 20 individuals uh, when we started. So a very, very kind of humble Humble beginnings, in, in, in my opinion. Um, 2019, a lot of stuff has happened. Our community started to grow. We could only do so many KubeCons a year. Uh, we created the uh, KCD programs, or Kubernetes Community Days, and uh, our first KCD was held in Amsterdam, I think, in 2019. Uh, and this has grown to basically, you know, I think we've done over 50 uh, of them uh, in partnership with our community. It's been incredible to kind of see KCDs grow all over the world. So thank you for anyone who has participated uh, in this program and helped us push these um, along. We also have a lot of meetups in the world. So we also formed our Cloud Native community groups as a way to kind of formalize and structure meetups of the world. And we've done, you know, thousands uh, of these. And, and thank you all who have kind of been participating in this to truly spread Cloud Native knowledge to where your community exists. So, in a kind of a condensed timeline fashion, Kubernetes is going to go turn 10 later this year, uh, in June 7th, 2024, since the first commit. And for those of you who have been in open source, 10 years in open source, it's, it's kind of like dog years. It's a freaking lifetime in, in, in some ways. So a lot has changed in those 10 years, but it is an important thing to kind of celebrate. And remember, I love throwing like a little party here and there. So what we're going to do is um, we want all of you to celebrate Kubernetes turning 10 with this year with us. And uh, if you go to Kubernetes, which is the official, uh, you know, I guess, hashtag or, or slogan of the event, .cncf.io, um, we're going to be throwing a party uh, at uh, kind of that original office over at Google where uh, kind of Kubernetes started out. But we're going to invite all y'all in the community to throw parties all over the world and we'll support you in that endeavor. So uh, please go to Kubernetes, Kubernetes 
cncf.io and apply and help us celebrate uh, later this year. So it's going to be fun. All right. So Kubernetes today, it is uh, truly one of the most uh, active and largest open source projects out there behind Linux. I don't want to pull up all the full statistics, but you know, it's you know, <laughs> 38 forks, 656, uh, I think, releases. Uh, we have one, also one of the largest Slacks in the world with nearly 200,000 people on that Kubernetes uh, Slack. Special thank you to all the uh, Slack admins, both emeritus and folks that <laughs> continue to keep that place uh, welcoming, inclusive, and functional. Um, you know, we have tons of uh, certified Kubernetes distributions, service providers that support people and companies um, adopting Kubernetes all over the world. And it's just an incredible unit. And we have over 200,000 certified Kubernetes administrators out there in the world. So it's truly an incredibly you know, massive uh, you know, project. It's never too late to kind of get started with contributing. And you know, one of the whole things that my team and I were thinking about, like, you know, how do we kind of close things off is, well, you know, we, we, we all got our journey started with Kubernetes in all different ways. So um, you know, we created this little app that basically you know, wanted to highlight, like, what was your first contribution to Kubernetes? And you know, if you kind of go look at these, you have folks like, you know, uh, I think Nikita did a improved documentation, improved contributing instructions. You know, we had Don Chen, uh, I think, improve the build script uh, in, in Kubernetes. Uh, George Castro tried to, I think, add snap package support to <laughs> Kubernetes back in the day. Tim, I think, did some uh, you know, a minor doc improvement. There are many ways to kind of get started, and you don't have to be a very, you know, crazy, you know, coder. You could open up an issue with a problem. You could fix documentation. You could do a translation. Um, you know, you could host an event. Uh, these are all very, very valid contributions. And you know, I want all of you to kind of today, you know, potentially reflect on your first contribution to Kubernetes. So, I, you know, if we could probably do this live because why not? It uh, always adds a little bit of spice to. Uh, keynotes, but um, if you all go to this site right now, and if you have a contribution to Kubernetes, and you'll enter your GitHub handle, and then uh, you'll be able to uh, tweet it out and share it. So it uh, looks like my first contribution to Kubernetes was unfortunately a uh, uh, setting up the legal and governance structure, uh, and then moving, moving from the, moving from the uh, Google CLA, to the CNCF CLA, which is definitely uh, super important. Uh, and then uh, let's go tweet that out. So perfect. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I'll take time to kind of reflect on, you know, how you got started in the Kubernetes uh, community and, you know, know that there are many, many people in this room willing to support you in, in any way. And let's go continue to grow, you know, sexually, which is one of the most uh, successful and important open source projects uh, in, our, in our time. So, uh, and, and thank you for everyone who's been uh, contributing over the years. So uh, check it out, share, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at one of our parties uh, this year celebrating uh, Kubernetes 10th. So to kind of wrap up uh, today's um, you know, opening, a um, couple final announcements today. So one thing is we've been investing a lot in education, training. You know, one of the biggest complaints that we get uh, from the CNCF, from companies that are trying to migrate to cloud native and use cloud native is like, we need to be able to hire people. We need to find people. Can you please, uh, you know, recommend and refer folks? So we've been investing a lot in the last handful of years of uh, improving our, you know, certifications, providing more free training and so on. And one thing that's kind of been missing is, you know, we have an incredible community of folks that come here and participate. We have a wonderful set of ambassadors that I see kind of sitting in front of me that have guided and helped us as an organization. But what we really haven't had is, you know, essentially education ambassadors, training ambassadors. So this year, um, you know, we're going to be announcing a new program today, which we're going to be deeming called Cubestronauts, which are essentially our education ambassadors who have taken every... Kubernetes-related certification and pass them, and we're going to basically work with them to improve all of our stuff for education, training, and certification, you know, for the community, using the community to provide a lot more input for us. So I want to thank some of the folks that have been instrumental in kind of piloting this. We have some of them. Uh, they, they all get blue jackets because uh, that's, that's what we do here. And uh, maybe we could kind of uh, have some of them stand up and, and thank them for all their amazing work and look forward to our collaboration. So let's see if we could spotlight uh, these folks. Stand up and... Get some light and thank you. Thank you for all your work. 
Thanks, all. We'll eventually find space helmets for, for all y'all, but uh, couldn't source them in, in time. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, the other thing that we're done is, uh, doing is we're expanding our Kubernetes training partner program to kind of include more uh, you know, training companies and so on. So we have a, a partnership with uh, Udemy, essentially, that we're launching what we call a CNCF-endorsed content program. So basically, all this means is any training or certification that is actually written by a maintainer or ambassador um, is going to be featured and highlighted through all these different uh, dis training dis distributors out there. So that's something we're very uh, excited to go pilot out with uh, you know, Udemy and the Linux Foundation training team. So, you know, without uh, wasting a little bit more, too much time, um, you know, running an event like this is, it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, if you don't know CNCF, we're about 50 or so uh, people that kind of work really hard behind the scenes to put these shows on. And uh, given that we've gotten so large, we have to plan in advance a little bit more. So uh, we are now planning two years ahead in advance for KubeCons, and I'm happy to kind of share uh, some of the locations we will be uh, appearing in the next uh, couple of years. So next year for KubeCon, uh, <laughs> KubeCon Europe, is gonna be in London. London's a lovely city. I hope the weather uh, treats us well. Uh, you know, there. In North America, we're going to be Atlanta, which is an awesome southern, uh, southeastern city. So I'm very excited to head out there, uh, you know, next year. And then, like I said, we're planning two years out. So uh, we're going to be, for the first time, going back. We're going to be going back to Amsterdam in uh, 2026. I know some of you said that was probably your favorite KubeCon due to the convention center. It was very, like, well-lit and very nice, lots of fresh uh, sunshine. So we're going to be back there. In, in 2026, and then of course, in back in North America, we will be in LA, October 26 or 29. So, please block your calendars. We have to now plan a little bit more in advance now. So, uh, hope to see all y'all in these events. And of course, we'll have other uh, KubeCons throughout the world that will announce. So, to kind of wrap things up, you know, enjoy your last day here. Uh, next KubeCon is going to be up in North America in Salt Lake City. We'd love to see here. Um, for all the folks that are looking potentially to become a Cubestronaut like our uh, Blue Jacket <laughs> friends over there, uh, there's a training discount code, KCE24, that you could use. Um, check out contribcard.dev to highlight your first contribution to Kubernetes, and then we're going to be throwing some fun parties uh, later this year in June. So please join us uh, there, and um, thank you all for continually to show up at these events and supporting uh, the Cloud Native uh, community. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you, see you next time. <laughs>